of us are in touch with our innermost essence from the get-go, while for others it's a process of discovery. Gautamit Saksaria had an unexpected revelation as she explained to Karishma in the kitchen. Born and bred in Mumbai, Gautami Saksaria grew up surrounded by the flavours and aromas of Indian home cooking. Despite this, she was not a cook by inclination, preferring to play cricket with the boys. And it was only when her desperate parents sent her on a cookery course that she discovered her interest and aptitude. Today, she's based in Cape Town, where she shares her love of Indian cuisine with her students. Hello! Welcome, welcome! So lovely to meet you. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Hello. Are we going to here? Yes. Wow, this looks amazing. Thank you. I hope you enjoy it. I'm sure I will. Exactly how did a cooking class change your life? You know, I wouldn't have really thought that a cooking class could change my life because till pretty much the age of 20, I didn't know how to cook. Um, and then my parents enrolled me for this cooking class and within three hours I knew how to chop, knead, stir, fry, pretty much everything. When we got to Cape Town, I was initially without a job and I had itchy fingers. So I said, okay, why not put something that has been my recent passion into practice? I cannot wait to get started. Tell me, what are we cooking? We're cooking a traditional Rajasthani dish where my husband's family comes from. So it's called dal bati. It, um, so it's dal, which means lentil, and bati is a type of bread. It's not a traditional bread that you'd see in any restaurant. So it's, it's something that's very unique to the village, more the rural scene in Rajasthan. I'm so excited. What's first? We're going to be starting with the curry paste. So for that, I'd be taking an onion chop it. So we're going to be dry roasting a lot of spices along with the onion and the garlic. It just gives it a little more consistency as well. Uh, so it's more thick as opposed to a liquid uh, or just a powder. Okay. And then we're going to take some garlic. It's not an Indian dish if there isn't garlic in it. So what's next? So these are dried uh, Kashmiri chilies. So okay. they're literally sun-dried. Mm -hmm. And then we just break them for the flavour. For the How hot are they? Uh, it okay. looks fiery, but it, it isn't that fiery. Because you just, we're going to be making a pot of this paste, but you just take a teaspoon of it, and then you take the non-roasted cumin. Why the roasted and the non-roasted? The roasted is something that I put just for the, because it's got a nice aroma. Okay. Uh, but the non-roasted is something that we will roast, and in all these ingredients, cumins take the longest time to heat up. And once that gets hot, and it gets a little brown, that's when you know that you need to turn off the flame. You don't bother looking at the chilies turning black, nothing should be warning bells for you, except the cumin. So we take a little bit of the red chili powder, uh, we take a little bit of the coriander powder, and this one, I'm gonna tell you, this is called chaat masala. This is a divine spice, it's, it's almost addictive. Oh, my favorite. I love this one. Oh, it's my favorite. Okay, so now we're going to get to roasting the spices. Okay. Okay. So we're going to be roasting this. It's dry roast, so we don't need any oil. So you see, I've got cumin as one of the ingredients in this. Uh, when the cumin, the cumin, cumin seeds are the ones that take the maximum time to heat up, and when they do heat up, they trap heat in their little bodies for the longest time. So when the cumin starts turning a little brown, that's probably when things are cooking, okay. even though the other things may not show in, ch in terms of change of colour. Tell me a bit more about dal bati. Why is it so special? It's an authentic uh, Rajasthani dish. You wouldn't find it in restaurants. Um, not too many people have heard about that dish because it's very, very unique to a state and in, in India. It's turned brown enough, so this is when we can turn off the flame. And what we'll do is, when it's, when it's this hot, we add half a teaspoon of ghee just to kind of mellow the harshness of the spice. What do you think is the most intimidating thing about cooking Indian food? I think people, people come with these preconceived notions that they need to measure a lot of stuff. So say for instance, I haven't measured anything. I just take little pinches of things as per my likes. So now we're gonna just let this cool. Um, before we blend it um, and let the ghee do its, its work its charm on the rest of the spices 
and we move back to the counter for making the bread. Excited. It's a very, very easy process. You just mix a little bit of pinch of salt in the flour and you take literally a scoop of ghee and that's it. And you've got your ingredients in place. You add water and knead it. Is that it? So simple. That, that is it, literally. There's no rolling involved, which is quite a bane for Indian making bread. So I'm going to start kneading it by adding a little water at a time. But I'm not going to use my palms because I don't want it all getting mushy and unmanageable. What consistency are we looking for? So it's smooth, but it's not sticky like a, like a chapati. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what you, so you can punch it a few times. I'm just going to make it into balls now. I'm just going to put it in the oven now. So now we're going to be making the potato mash that goes with the dal and the bati. We just need to chop the onion okay. and then add the stuff in. So this is fresh coriander, of course, it's nicely washed. I love coriander. And who doesn't? It's one of my favourite spices too. I think it's just very fresh. Everything it's, tastes better. It, everything. And now a little bit of roasted cumin, just a mild flavour of that because it can get quite, quite strong. And then I'm going to take lemon. To give it the authentic Rajasthani flavour, we're going to add a little bit of mustard oil. Is mustard oil used a lot in Rajasthani cooking? This is one dish where it's poured on the top as opposed to being cooked, something being cooked in it. Does that look good? It does. Do you want to try it? Of course. I'm going to have a little... I'm going to taste the salt. I think it could do with a little more salt. I think so too. <laughs> I think this should be enough. Yep. Just mix it together. And now we just pop it in the refrigerator. For later. For later. And I'll do a quick wash of the hands. I see we've got these beautiful yellow lentils here. This is obviously for the dal. Yes, it is. It's, it's called tuwal dal. Um, what I've done is you need to boil it uh, or pressure cook it. So what I've done is I've pressure cooked it with some turmeric and some salt. Mm -hmm. And it's all ready just before you guys walked in. So let's move to that side. Finish it off. Finish it off. So we're just going to start with putting a little bit of a heaped teaspoon uh, of ghee or clarified butter in the kadai. And now while the ghee is getting a little hot, I'm going to start put putting in the curry leaves and a little bit of roasted cumin. It's half a teaspoon for the people who need to know measurements. Ghee has two flavours. It highlights flavours of the spices and second, it avoids acidity. So Indian food, especially with ghee and all the spices, can be quite acidic. And this kind of helps tone down the levels. And while it's getting brown, the reason why we add ginger garlic paste is because what happens is onions tend to brown evenly if you put a nice coat of ginger garlic paste on them. Now, if you remember, we roasted some spices at the beginning. This is what turns out because I've blended them. You can store this in an airtight box in your refrigerator and use a spoon of it or as you like in every curry that you make. You can just add a teaspoon of dal to kind of gently introduce the flavour. In the meanwhile, we could move over and start doing the poppadum so that we have that ready in time. Yes, let's do it. Krishna, why don't you bring the poppadum here and we can crush it here and just make the last bit of our delicious... You can put it on just this counter, it. perhaps. I love doing this. Me too. So I'm going to pick up a teaspoon of ghee. Mm -hmm. And as you see, the coal, as it gets really, really hot, I'm going to throw it in and you can cover it. Okay, so we are all done. Why don't you mingle with the family, take a seat outside and I'll dish us all a plate and join you guys. I can't wait, thank you. Well, I just have to say thank you so much for such an incredible afternoon. An absolute pleasure, an absolute pleasure.